YouTube, what's going on, man? It's your boy Xerxes coming back at you with another one. Um, I'm a little bit upset. I just recorded a video. It was about 25 minutes long, and I realized that my mic was not working <laughs> at all the whole time. So this is going to be round two. But um, without further ado, I want to get into some of the nitty gritty of the Frostblades Trickster, okay? So in some of the last videos that I posted, people have been asking, um, hey, you know, my POB doesn't seem like it's set up right, or I don't know how to go about crafting a, a, a claw in the necropolis, you know? Um, so I figured in one video, I just kind of want to break down kind of everything that people have asked me for in the last, you know, four or five videos and kind of make this a, a quick like how-to guide um, on everything that you might need to know with uh, the Frostblades Trickster. So without further ado, this is round number two. Um, we'll start with how to set up your POB. Okay, so um, we're going to open up POB here. And as you can see, I have a bunch of different characters. Well, this is actually one character, but a different, a bunch of different progress days. Um, so you might not have this when you open up POB. So if you want to set up yours, all you need to do is click on new. And then you're going to go to import slash export build. And then you'll need to type in your Path of Exile account name right there, and then you click on start. And it'll pull up all the characters that you have. For us, we're gonna go to this current league, which for me is the private league that I'm playing in. So we're gonna click on that. This is the duelist that I used to mule um, a couple of gems at early level. So this is the trickster. So you're gonna select your character that you're playing right now. And then it's as simple as clicking on passive tree and jewels and items and skills. That's all you need to do on this page and then just double check that your main skill that you're trying to do damage with is set up here okay that's number one done and out of the way okay number two we're gonna go to skills okay so this is where you enable the skills that you're using to do damage so very simple you're going to click on frost blades this is my six link that i have with frost blades and you're going to hit include in full dps that's easy. Double check and make sure that all your qualities and, and everything are right. I'm still leveling up this cold damage, um, but we'll just act like it's at level five, okay, to, to show what the, the DPS will be here tomorrow when it gets leveled up. So that's that part. Um, this is in, important as well for Frostblades characters. You want to click include in full DPS on your War Chief and your Protector. And then what you need to do is enable two um protectors okay so oh you actually have to highlight this i forgot so you highlight it and then hit two okay so because you can have multiple totems so you're going to have two protectors and one war chief and then you need to hit enable ancestral war chief so now you can see the damage goes up quite a bit so we were at 5.3 with our totems up we're at 7.9 so this is a huge damage increase if you want a true number on what you're doing without Vol War Chief, then you can untick Vol War Chief right here. I like to have it just because I want to show what my high end burst DPS is against the boss when Vol War Chief is up. So click that if you want to. Um, this will make your number higher, but it's a little bit kind of inflated. But I like to I like to use it anyway because we like to see those big numbers, baby. So with that page right here, this is done. Okay, on to the next thing, um, which is going to be items. Excuse me. Um, so here, very simple. All you need to do is just enable your flasks. Okay. All your flasks are enabled. That part's done. Move on to the next thing, which is going to be the config. And this is where um, most people, I think, screw things up. So I'll show you how I set it up with my Frostblades character. Some things could be different based on your build, and I will go over those. Um, but no matter what, you're going to be using power charges, or you should be. And then you're obviously going to have frenzy charges, so you take that on. And as you can see with just those two things right there, 9 mil DPS, 17 mil DPS, just from those two, which is absolutely insane. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, moving on down. We're going to go to Fortify, which we get from our um, chest implicit. So you want to click that on. doesn't do anything for the damage, but it does do something for your EHP, right? Because it's just less damage taken. So Fortify is good. And we have Elusive from Nightblade. I always just leave this as average, right? You don't need to do anything there. We already turned our flasks on in the um, item section, so you don't need to do that. Conk Ground would be like if you have... Uh, maybe like a bottled faith or something. So you don't need to worry about this either. All this other stuff, don't worry about. Now, this is where the, the real magic happens in this box here. Um, we are going to tick that the enemy is at close range. And what this does is, as you can see, my hit chance right now is at 94%. So I'm not hit capped, right? So it's very important that we take this mastery right here. 
which is 50% more accuracy reading at close range, okay? So that means that when we're up in a character, an enemy's face hitting them, we're actually going to be hit capped, okay? Real big. Um, you, you can see, I believe my damage will go way down if I take this off in the config because I'm not at 100% hit chance. So 23.8, 26.6 is 3 million damage just from this. The enemy will be blinded. You should either have blind on your claw or ta blind tattoos or blind on a jewel somewhere. 10% is probably good enough, uh, I think, with how fast we're attacking. 10% uh, chance is, is more than enough. We're doing uh, 14 attacks per second. So if you have 10%, that means that every second you're going to be blinding an enemy. Okay. Now, burning. The enemy will be burning because we have heat shiver and it does cold as extra fire. And we crit with that. So any crit inflicts an ailment as long as it does that type of damage. So we crit with cold. It gets added as extra fire. That crits and we burn the enemy, we ignite the enemy, uh, we chill the enemy from Frostblades because it does cold damage, and the effect of chill is gonna be 30, and the enemy we're gonna mark as frozen, okay? Against like uber bosses, this might not be the case, but if you have um, a decent amount of damage, the enemy... Oh, Jesus. Alexa scared the shit out of me. <laughs> she literally never does that, that's really weird. Anyway, uh, sorry about that. So enemy's frozen. And then this is another big one, brittle ground. Okay, so on the boots right here, you get the implicit for brittle ground. Uh, ideally, you want this to be lasting at least three seconds, probably four or five would be better. And what this does is it um, gives base crit to an enemy that's standing on it. So as you can see, my crit chance right now is 80%. But if I click brittle ground, the enemy is on brittle ground. Now it's 100, right? So massive damage increase. We go from 34 to 42 million so if you don't have brittle on your boots get it on your boots and then if you um, don't have that ticked make sure that you have that ticked the enemy is going to be shocked this is another important thing as you can see from our items here you need to have flat lightning damage added to your attacks somewhere for me i have that on this ring which is 1 to 41 lightning damage to attacks and then i also have it on my shield which is one to 23. So you just need a little bit, but a little bit, like I said earlier, we're critting, we're doing lightning damage with crits and that will inflict shock. So um, the more shock you have, the bigger, more um, lightning damage you have, the bigger the shock will be. For us, it's not a ton. So I usually go anywhere between 10 to 15. So I'm just gonna put 15% right there, okay? And then we, like I said earlier, we're freezing, we're shocking and we're igniting. So we're gonna put three because we have all three of those. Some of these might apply to you. They shouldn't, except for Intimidate, probably. You could get that on a Lethal Pride. So if you have an Intimidate on Hit Lethal Pride, tick that, and it'll go up even more. For me, I don't have Intimidate, so I'm not going to check that one. Okay, so for this section, that's done. 50 mil DPS, by the way, but that's going to go down. Don't worry. This middle part, don't worry about it. Don't need to do anything there. And then the only other thing we're going to do is show what our Pinnacle Boss DPS is. So it was at 50 but because we're fighting a pinnacle boss, it goes down to 39. If I was to fight an uber boss, it goes all the way down to 11. It's a huge DPS decrease. But most people's POB that you're ever going to see is going to be at guardian pinnacle boss. So select that. And then that is how you set up a POB. Okay. Pretty straightforward. Um, if you guys have any questions or need further clarification, drop them down in the comments below. I'd be happy to help. But that is how I set my POB up. And that's how we got to 39 million DPS. So hopefully that cleared that part of it up. Okay. Now on to part number two, which is going to be how to craft items using Necropolis League. So, um, oh, this was me testing my audio because I uh, was a dummy and didn't have my mic turned on. So we're going to go to a site called craftofexile.com. And this is what will pop up when you first go here. And this is very, very straightforward, very easy to figure out how to craft an item. So we're going to go for the claw. Uh, just as an example, you can do this with any piece of gear and all it's as easy as selecting the mods that you want on it. Okay. So for a claw, uh, we're going to go T1 fizz, T1 flat fizz. I might be going too fast for you, but these are the mods that you're looking for. You just click on the mod and then it has different tiers. So you just go to T1, T1, and we're going to want T1 cold damage to attacks, which is that. For the suffixes, we're going to want attack speed, and we're going to want crit chance, and we're going to want crit multi. Boom. Three prefixes, three suffixes, done. Now all you need to do is click on graveyard and hit compute best selection. 
and this is going to take a second and it's going to tell you roughly um, what it thinks is the best way for you to um, insert the corpses into the graveyard to come out with the desired effect. So we'll let this do its thing and then it'll show you this, this is like kind of a rough estimate. I don't always follow it like to a T, but it'll give you at least a baseline as far as like kind of what you want to go for. So you need to have 7,500% increased cold, 500 crit, 900, 9,000 physical attribute scarcer, all of this right here. So basically plug these into your graveyard and um, then you should end up with an item that looks something like this, right? And like I said, it's a rough estimate, so it's not always going to be perfect. You can come up with something that's not desired, right? That's just the RNG of the game. But like this one, for example, would be pretty good, except for it hit attribute requirements, which is one that I actually hit on one of my claws, which sucks. But um, this is the baseline that I use to, to go about crafting mine. I will also show you um, right here. Uh, I will link this in the description below too for all of you tryhards out there. But this is a layout of the graveyard. Sorry, I put in, shouldn't have fucking chewed while I was recording a video, but it is what it is. Um, so this is the layout if you were to be looking down on the graveyard. Okay, so like this is where the dude's standing and this is like where your stash is up here. So basically what you do is you put increased effect of rows where it says row and then increased effect of columns where it says column. And then what you're gonna get is either a 1.25 multiplier for whatever the base is or a 1.5. So let's say you need to have mana scarcer at like 1500%, but you don't have 1500%. Let's say you have 1200%. Those ones that you have mana scarcer, you put here in this 1.5 one and that 300 mana scarcer becomes 450 mana scarcer. Okay, so this is how you can kind of manipulate the graveyard to um, help out on some of those uh, corpses that you might be lacking on. So this is very important. I will link it down in the description below for you. I used this when I did mine. So big, big uh, help there. Big shout out to whoever made this. I don't know if someone linked it to us in the Discord, but helped me out significantly. So um, that covers the graveyard crafting. If you guys have any questions on that, feel free, drop them down in the comments below. Okay, now let's get on to um, the changes that we have made to the character okay so this is where i believe it's so weird uh people in the private league have been like getting the first to do it like five of us have already gone in there before so i don't know what that's about but uh anyway i digress so character what have we done differently the claw in the last video i had like the lower tier fizz damage with blind on it and I took that off and did just the, the exalt uh, craft and put the highest tier fizz that I could on there. So these are, this is basically, if it was T1 fizz, it would be the best claw in the game pretty much, but it's pretty damn close. It's very good. Heat shiver still the same. This is still the same. Shield still the same. This is still the same. I did get a new taming that it rolled 29 all res instead of 24. So I picked up 5% all res there, nothing too huge. Um, and then this is where the big, big change came from today. I was able to craft plus two strike gloves. I threw these gloves in the necropolis and fractured a mod and it ended up hitting accuracy, which is the best thing that it possibly could have hit. Crafted them, ended up hitting one to two fire damage on the exalt, which is kind of shitty, but um, these are very, very good gloves. So um, if you guys need to know how to get the plus two strikes on there, uh, I, I'm not going to go over that, but just look look up um, crafting plus two strike gloves on YouTube. Zish has a video, and it's the video I always use if I ever. I don't need to anymore, but when I did need to know how to do it, uh, just follow that video, and it'll show you exactly what you need to do. Still applicable, even though the video was quite a while ago. So that's how you craft those. And what this enables you to do is to drop the mastery on the tree, right? So typically, we, we would have these points here with plus one strikes from this mastery. Now that we have plus two strike gloves, we don't need this anymore. Saves us a shit ton of points. So that's, um, it. Fi these gloves fixed all kinds of problems for me. So they fixed my accuracy, which is a tier that I, a mod that I had on my claw before. And so when I lost that, I, I lost my hit chance. And so um, I needed it somewhere and this is where I got it. So now I'm hit capped with these um, and I have plus two strikes with these. So these were massive. Uh, the other change that I made was I did get a new Stygian Vise, very similar um, per se to the last one that I had. This one um, is a much more like defensive thing. So as you can see, I have 3,300 life right now with this one on. If I was to take this off and put this one on, 
I have 3,500 life. So this one, this belt has given me like 200 life. So you don't really need it though. The, the difference in 200 life isn't that noticeable, but the difference in damage that I got from this one was insane. So I rolled this with chaos res essences until I hit um, something decent. I think it had the cold res and the LE damage with attacks. Then I did suffixes can't be changed veiled orb and the veiled orb gave me the life. Um, I was hoping for a veiled suffix, but it's okay. And, and then I had an open prefix. And what you can do if you have an open prefix on a belt is you can either hit it with a um, uh, hunter exalted orb, which is what I did here, and that hit the 10% increased life. Or you can hit it with the redeemer exalted orb, which is what I did here. And it, um, it, it can hit, I'll actually show you since we have craft of exile pulled up. Um, this is another good tool that you can use, right? So we'll go to jewelry. We'll go to um, belt, and then this will show you what the, the natural prefixes that can roll on the item are here. The natural suffixes that can roll are here. Then if you scroll down, it'll show you what the shaper ones are, shaper prefixes, shaper suffixes, elder, elder, and all the way down, right? So as you can see, what I was talking about, hunter, there's only three hunter prefixes that you can have on a belt, and it's either increase chaos damage, increase life, or gain a fast charge. So if you have only one open prefix and you slam it with the hunter exalted orb, it's going to hit one of these three no matter what. Same can be said for the redeemer, right? Which is the one that I hit, right? So I <clears throat> redeemer exalted because I had an open prefix and it's either going to hit increased cold damage, increased damage with hits against chilled enemies, which either one of these is good or it could hit evasion rating, which would be bad. So you have a 66% chance to hit something decent, which is what I hit. It's tier three um, on the um, cold damage, unfortunately, but you know, beggars can't be choosers in a private league. So this shows you even more how like helpful this craft of exile website can be okay so hit that got some more damage from there and the belts i just uh, the, the belt the boots i just recrafted with um with some essence movement speed i think and hit something decent there so um nothing really big change there and that pretty much covers the changes for the character's gear um the the big change comes here in the passive tree so the last tree that i posted um, I just want to make sure my audio is actually working so I don't have to do this again. Uh, the I was pathing over here, getting this crit multi and attack speed and accuracy, or excuse me, uh, accuracy and crit multi. And then I had path here to get some attack speed, path here to get some uh, a jewel socket, and then I had these two points and this wheel. So basically what I was able to do was remove all of that shit that I just talked about and then plug in this cluster jewel that I crafted. Uh, using the harvest bench. So I went over this briefly, but what you need is an eye level 84, 12 passive plus cluster with increased cold damage. Once you have that, then you come over here and you craft it with um, attack on the, on the bench, right? You can do it with attack. And if you don't have a bunch of purple juice, basically what I did was I farmed a shit ton of purple and blue because you can use either attack or you can use caster. Right? Either one of these will guarantee that you're going to get the mod that you're looking for, which is the 3% increase. That It's not going to guarantee 3%, but it will guarantee that you get anywhere between 1% to 3% increase in attack speed with cold skills. And that's what you're looking for. So you just spam those harvest juice until you hit 3% increased attack speed. Ideally, you want to have at least 3% damage. It can go up to 4 And then it might be even 4 or 5 but anything over 3 is good. You can't have anything less than that. And then you have to have 35% increased effect because what that does is it gives you an extra percent on all of these, right? So this 3% increased at at attack and cast speed and 3% increased damage becomes four, as you can see here. So instead of giving me three, that extra 35% makes it jump up one more percent. So for every point, we get 16% increased cold damage instead of 12, because again, it's multiplying that by 1.35. And then... Um, it gives us 16 cold, 4% 4 4 damage, and 4% attack and cast speed. The thing that you would ideally want in a GG cluster would be either chaos res as your other one. So as you can see, I have like life regen on here, which is absolute shit. But in pri private league solo cell phone, I can't be bothered to try and risk losing this. So I'm just going to stick with it for now until I can farm another eye level 84 and then try and craft a better one. But this for me is good. But ideally on that, uh, that last... Um, explicit you would want chaos res 
uh, all attributes or all resistance. That would be like the, the best in slot. And then I just threw in some jewels here. Mm, was able to get corrupted blood immunity on this one, which was solid. And then here you're looking for a, um, it can either be four or five passive, doesn't matter, uh, jewel that you're going to get um, with totem damage. And then the node that you're looking for is ancestral guidance, which gives you increased effect of your totem buffs. So the ancestral protector gives you attack speed and the war chief gives you melee damage. And this multiplies all those buffs that you get by 1.3. So very big to have there and just threw in another attack speed and melee crit jewel. So um, I think that covers everything that I needed to cover, except oh, I almost forgot. There was one person in one of the last videos that wanted me to go over my Atlas tree. Um, this is going to be scuffed just so you know, because I'm solo self found private league. So this is definitely not going to be the best strategy for you trade league Andes out there, but this is what I'm running. This is a destructive play tree uh, that I use to farm like Maven invitations and um, uh, hunter or not hunter um, conqueror maps, shaper maps, synthesis maps. So this is the tree that I use for that. So I'll quickly just like kind of hold it here. If you guys want to take a look at it, these are all scuffed by the way, guys, like I wouldn't recommend following these to a T. This is just kind of what I've been doing. Okay. So in case you want to know it, this one is, um, what is it? It's, uh, I think I run the pact with energy node for Nico and then scarabs with essence and strong boxes. And that's what this tree is all about. This next one is one that I got from MB extreme. Uh, he's just, uh, Path of Exile streamer that I like really enjoy watching and he came up with this ritual um, delirium strat which I will if you guys are interested after I get done describing these trees I'll run a quick map so you guys can see what it looks like try not to make this videos too long but I do want to help out and kind of give people an idea of what's going on so there's this tree it's really fun you'll see it in a second if you want to stick around and this last tree is one that I used to farm corpses with um, harvest juice and some shrines that's pretty and the red altars that's pretty much all i have going on there so it should be enough time in there to for you guys to pause the video and take a look at it if you want um, what we will do now is just quickly i'll show you the deli and ritual strat that i've been running um, and you guys can see what the build looks like right now okay so we'll just quickly throw this stuff in and we'll blast through a map and then we'll call the video good there Hope this, uh, hope this video has been helpful. Uh, wanted to try not to rush through it because I just recorded another 25 minute video right before this that uh, didn't have any audio, unfortunately. But the, the damage is like, every time I think that it can't get any better, it just keeps on getting better. So it's like, I love this build so much. We'll just fly through. Oh, wait. Does this not? Oh, I don't think I got the deli mirror in the beginning of the map, huh? Oh, did it not have one? You know what? I screwed up, didn't I? Yep, I did. We're just going to act act like that didn't happen, guys. Uh, here, I just kind of wasted a map, but we'll do this one. This is the one that we need to do. Shit. Oh, tier seven. Yeah, we might get some corpses in this one. Uh, Volorb, Tormented Spirit. Okay, let's roll. Sorry about that. I'm a little, little cluster brained right now. But this is the Delhi strat. Okay, so boom, Delhi Mirror, guaranteed. Has strong boxes. All the strong boxes are corrupted. We just fly through here. I need to stop like picking up some of this stuff too. I've got way more like stuff than I actually need, but um, you know, solo cell phone, I guess you can never have too much shit. Let's cruise through here. Just taking like all these nodes too. So you guys can see like, I'm not even really looking at them, just making sure nothing's like super, super scary, but just, just click on stuff to get some quantity and what's nice too is that the deli mirror will like pause when you guys are doing these rituals so you don't need to worry about trying to fly through them like super fast or anything the deli mirror pauses while you're in them which is which is good it's 
stick around and see if anything drops real quick. Nope. Okay. A little chaos orb. What's nice about this build too is you really don't you don't need to aim or anything. You literally I'm just like holding left click and every once in a while I'll tap on my right click and that's that's about it. Frost blink, drop a protector every once in a while. And that's really all you need to do. With this strat too, you want to make sure that the Deli Mirror stays with you all the way through to the end. Because uh, you get plus one reward if you kill the map boss with the Deli Mirror still active. So, um, let's do this one. Oh, got a little stun lock there. That dude's no joke. I would not recommend like juice, juicing the the maps this hard if uh, if you guys don't have a strong character. Like I might actually die on this because I've just been clicking every single altar. But most of the time, this is just how I play. And um, if you're active and moving around, you're you're not gonna die. See, that's what I'm talking about, moving around. Gotta gotta stay moving around because we, we can get stunned in this uh, in this build. That's the one thing. If you get hit with like a high fizz damage, it can stun you. See the deli mirror starting to get a little crazy now. But we should we probably have enough damage to take these this guy out. Let's see. These dudes are juice. Look at that. I have, my totems aren't down. Okay, there we go. Boom. Okay, so that was like basically as juiced as we could possibly make it right there. Oh, and we skipped over a, um, a ritual for some reason. But as you can see, the rewards are, are nuts. So let's just uh, see what we get from these rewards real quick. Ideally, you wouldn't you wouldn't with 77 simulacrum splinters. That's wild. So this is a good strat right here. I think I like it a lot. Um, we will go back and do that uh, that last uh, uh, ritual real quick if we can find it. Won't bore you guys with the loot. Where is it? Um, oh, here it is. I just missed it because it was hidden underneath a bunch of shit. And it's much easier when there's not, not de Deli on there. So what you guys can do if your build's not strong enough is just, you know, go until it starts getting kind of sketchy and then just turn the Delirium Mirror off. Uh, and you can you can definitely still make the strat work that way. Um, but let's see if we got anything good in, in here. What the hell is this thing? Tainted Pact? How much is that worth? One Chaos. Sick. Any good uniques in here? I don't see any, unfortunately. Would have been nice if there was like just a headhunter waiting for me in there. Oh, you know what? I do kind of want this. Yeah, I'm going to take this. There's a power charge stacking build that I think uh, I might want to give a shot to. Anything good in here? Six link astral plate. Ten chaos orbs. We could take that. You can get kind of stun locked looking at some of this stuff, but you don't want to pass up like a really good like item or whatever. So we're going to take the, the, you know, the ten chaos orbs and then we'll reroll this and maybe just take a couple of chaos nothing else in here that we need we do have one more reroll but we're not going to have enough to get anything else after that so there we go boom map showcase done and with that i think this video has gone on long enough so um We'll leave the, the video there. If you guys have any questions on anything that I went over, feel free, drop them down in the comments below. I would be happy to help and uh, hope you guys enjoyed the build. If you're not following or sub to the channel, please hit that um, sub button. It would help me out a ton. Appreciate you guys. Catch you later.